Welcome to our video about instrumental insemination, often referred to as artificial insemination of honeybee queens. It has widely been accepted as a valuable tool for maintaining and improving queen lines. The ability to control both the drone and the queen lines through the use of insemination has allowed great improvements to the quality of honeybee queens available. We first start by collecting drones from drone colonies. These are colonies which have met our selection criteria and have been provided with additional drone comb for the queen to lay in. The drones are held within the colony by putting a queen excluder across the entrance to prevent them leaving or any other drones from coming in. They're held for 16 days post-emergence to make sure that they're nice and mature before being collected. They're collected from the outer frames of the colony where the most mature drones are found. We collect 10 to 15 drones per queen to be inseminated. Each drone will give us approximately one microliter of semen. To collect the semen from drones, we first have to avert the drone and expose their endophallus. We do this by applying pressure either side of the thorax for partial aversion, rolling pressure down the abdomen for full aversion. The bulb of the endophallus will hold a mucus plug with a small amount of semen. The semen has a marbly texture and creamy coloration. To collect the semen from the drone, we eject a small amount of saline or semen onto the bulb. We then draw this back up into the insemination tip, drawing the semen off of the mucus plug. It is important that we don't draw any mucus as this will clog the tip and prevent further collection or expulsion. The semen does not always appear in the same place on each mucus plug, so it's important to rotate and move the drone around until you can see the semen adequately and gain access to it. If the insemination tip is pressed too hard against the bulb, it risks drawing up the mucus from underneath the semen. If the mucus is drawn up, the semen must be ejected with the mucus and then recollected. If done promptly, this will clear any blockage. If the mucus is allowed to sit in the insemin insemination tip for too long, then it will block the tip and make it unusable. Semen from a large number of drones is collected to provide adequate amount for insemination of the queens. Each queen will require between 5 and 8 microliters of semen. It is important during collection that you do not touch the endophallus or the insemination tip. This can cause bacterial contamination which will result in queen failure. Queens need to mature before insemination. They will require 6 to 12 days post-emergence. The mature queens are encouraged into a tube called a backup tube. This is then placed against the queen holder and the queen is encouraged to walk backwards into it. The queen holder is then placed over the CO2 applicator. The CO2 will anesthetize the queen and prevent movement during the insemination process. The queen is positioned dorsal side down in the queen holder and the ventral hook and its sting forceps are moved into position. The ventral hook is used to support the queen's ventral side and open up her sting chamber. This will give access to her genital opening and genital chamber. The sting forceps are used to gently clamp the sting to lift it out of the way for easy access for the insemination tip. The insemination tip is brought down into position and aligned with the queen. It may be necessary at this point to readjust the queen for easy access.
If it is not possible to insert the insemination tip, the queen may need readjusting. Like Bring it. the insemination tip back and readjust the queen. Bring the insemination tip back into place to gain access to her genital chamber via the genital opening. Once the insemination tip has been inserted 0.5mm to 1mm, it needs to be moved laterally towards her ventral side to bypass the valve fold and then is inserted a further 0.5 to 1mm. Semen is then injected into the queen between 5 and 8 microliters. During this time, it's important to watch for leakage around the insemination tip to make sure that the tip is well positioned. Once the dose of the semen has been injected, the insemination tip is drawn back, clear of the queen. The queen is then released, first releasing pressure on the sting from the sting forceps and then removing the ventral hook. If there is any semen on the outside of the insemination tip, it will need cleaning off using a cotton bud and saline. The cotton bud should then be discarded after use. It is important that you do not touch the insemination tip, ventral hook or the sting forceps during this procedure. The queen is then removed from the CO2 applicator and marked. The next queen is then encouraged into the backup tube and then encouraged to walk backwards into the queen holder before placing her over the CO2 applicator. Again, the ventral hook and sting forceps are brought into position over the queen and the queen adjusted for good access. The ventral hook is used to open the queen sting chamber to gain access to the genital opening. It is inserted into the sting chamber and twisted sideways to enlarge the opening. The sting forceps are then brought into position and lowered into the opening. The ventral, hook can then, can, the ventral hook can then be slid down the sting forceps to open the queen. The sting forceps are then used to find and grab the queen sting, ensuring that the sting sheaves are not clamped at the same time. The sting is then lifted up and outwards to open the queen and expose the genital opening. The insemination tip is then brought down into position and aligned for access to the genital opening. The insemination tip is slid down alongside the underside of the sting to gain entry via the genital opening. It is then moved laterally towards the ventral side to bypass the valve fold and then inserted half a mil to one mil further. Semen is then ejected from the insemination tip. 
It may be necessary to insert and remove the insemination tip slightly before the semen can be ejected. A dose of 5 to 8 microliters of semen is ejected into the queen before slowly removing the tip. It is important to make sure there is no leakage around the size of the insemination tip. If there is, remove the tip, readjust the queen and then reinsert. Once the dose of semen has been administered, the queen is released and then marked. Queens are best marked while still anesthetised by the CO2. We number our queens for easy identification in the hive later. A small amount of glue is applied to the thorax before a numbered disc is put into place. The queen is then returned to her cage to come round after CO2 treatment. Once the queens have come round, they are then introduced into a large cage containing 60 millilitres of bees. The bees are treated with CO2 to anesthetise them to make easy introduction. Once they wake, they will quickly accept the queen. Queens are held for two to three days in these cages. This increases the movement of semen and sperm into the queen sperma theta from her genital chamber. Thank you very much for watching our video on instrumental insemination. If you would like to keep up to date with our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Or if you'd like to keep up to date with our news and events, please visit our website at www.bishopsbees.co.uk and subscribe to our newsletter.